Boker Tov, Yom Tov, Zoferim, Dovim, and Lila Tov. No matter where you are at, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Carrie, and I am going to speak from my heart today and also from the proof room. I had a question regarding demons and what we felt were demons simply because within the Christian narrative, we have been taught that the demons are disincarnate Nephilim. And we've been bringing to you a different higher perspective of Nephilim, and so therefore we need to address demonic entities. I'm a little frustrated, and simply because I posted uh, the answer to the question and YouTube deleted my response. So I am going to have to speak it to you verbally, and hopefully I can remember everything that I wrote. We are host bodies, and in that, we are to host a spirit. And Ken has shared with you that there was a theft in the garden, and the garden theft was our spirit nature was removed from us, outside of us, that we would have to hunt and chase and find it. But this was all in an experience to be able to find love. Find and build love. What is love and what is not love? And because of that, we have a void, an emptiness within us that is meant to be filled with that spirit, with unconditional love. Our experience with demonic entities are an experience for us to comprehend in the system of duality what is and what is not. And for us to experience and comprehend what an angel is, we also have to understand and comprehend what a demon is because they really are of the same nature as messenger beings that are higher frequencies that are a spectrum of light that we cannot see with our natural eye. But that does not mean that they don't exist. It means they exist out of their frequency, our spectrum, and we cannot see them. I have had personal experience with this when I was younger. As a broken vessel through lots of trauma, um, I was used as a host um, with demonic entities because I was doing things that were not becoming. Mother can protect us uh, in this incarnation, and this would be Mother's spirit outside of us, can protect us while we're doing things that are becoming. But if they are not becoming, meaning they are of the lesser beast ego nature, then we are allowing ourselves to be opened up to an influence of lesser nature beings, hence demonic. This is all connected into what Ken has also shared regarding demonic and mnemonic, as this is deeply connected to our forgetting. So a mnemonic vice is something that is utilized to help us remember, and it's specifically connected to like a language, which is the whole point of the language of light and love of in Hebrew and Aramaic, is so that we can remember who we are as vessels of light and love, so that the demonic, without the remembering, they cannot attach ourselves to us in that place. They can only attach to us in our forgetting. And the anchor point is our beast ego nature, which is the reptilian side, our brain stem that we have within our body, which is then controlled and manipulated by fear. When we remember who we are, we enter into unconditional love, which then, when we are unconditional love, does not allow the entity to attach itself to us any longer. So when we're in the process of filling ourselves with light and love, in our process of becoming to the place of remembering, as we are filling and compressing ourselves with light, they have no room to be part of us anymore because they operate in the shadow. It should be known that we have described to you hell, Hades, and Sheol, as all being the same word from the root of Sheol, which means the place to seek answers. And when you look into Hades, which is Greek, it also has a definition meaning shade. Shade is an anagram for Hades, exact same letters, different order. So shade and shadow is where these entities reside. We also have to keep in mind that we are all energetic beings and there are energies that are outside of our spectrum that still operate in frequencies and energies that we cannot see. So these demonic energetic beings 
are here because of two things. We live in a system of duality, and in the system of duality, there's only two things that we need to focus on or to comprehend about why we're here before the harvest. Are we going to choose service to self or service to others? These spirit entities of the negative polarity as a shade are here to serve self. They have chosen to not have an earth suit, so that continues to polarize in the negative stature of service to self, so that they can inhabit vessels, host bodies, which is us. So when we are empty and void of love and light, they have the perfect opportunity to jump in for a ride within the vessel and to control it. This is service to self. So if you want to think of it this way, they gain more points for their harvest of service to self by inhabiting a host body and taking it for a ride, controlling and manipulating it through fear. One of the ways that we can deal with this is by choosing to increase our consciousness levels. And in choosing our consciousness levels to increase them, if we choose to get out of the force side, which if you look at the Hawkins scale is from zero to 200, the force side is where they are allowed to inhabit us. And I highly suggest looking at the Hawkins scale so you can see what I'm talking about. But once we get ourselves out of the force side into power, the first stepping point is courage. That's at 200. Now our goal is to get up to between 700 and 1,000. So 200 is a long way from the Mashiach anointing, which is the Christ consciousness, which is the understanding, the unified field that we are all one but is the step in the direction outside of the foresight that they control and manipulate us through. So when you stand your ground through courage, which is the first inclination that you are moving into the power side of your being, they are not able to stand in that. And we will use whatever force is necessary in our power side to deal with the entities, whether that means we're calling on the name of Yeshua or Yahuwah, we are becoming courageous. And really, it's not so much that there's the power in the name of Yahuwah, yod heh vav -Heh, or even Yeshua, as they are frequencies, but it is using, utilizing the power within our own selves as a vessel of consciousness, of light and love, where we begin to make a stand against these lower oppressive, oppressive energies that have shackled us to fear. Because now you've flipped over into courage, which is the opposite of fear. And so they can no longer feed on that. So I mentioned before, I've had a personal experience with this when I was younger. And because I was a shattered vessel, and I was dealing with a tremendous amount of fear, and I was dealing with things in my beast ego nature, I was burdened with demonic forces that were controlling and manipulating me. And so I went through what you would call a deliverance. And I'm very grateful for it. But it was really the act of courage of me being able to, to want to be free of these oppressive entities so that I could keep, continue moving forward in compressing light within. So I'm very thankful that happened. But it did wake me up to a reality much greater than what we see with our natural eye because it was definitely the reality of the spirit realm, the etheric side that we do not see with our natural eyes, 
because it is on the outside of our spectrum of light in our lower density bodies that we just are not aware of. But it is real and it does exist. And that is why we are wanting to share with people the language of light and love, the mnemonic devices, so that we can remember who we are. Because as soon as we remember who we are, as vessels of light and love, as fractals of source, as zero-point energy, when we begin to clearly have the remembering and the definition of who we are, it puts us out of the reach of their ability because we remove the anchor point, which is fear, and anything that is of force. So this includes unforgiveness, bitterness, and hatred. All of those things need to be dealt with. Anything that is of the beast's lower ego nature, and this is even dealing with sexual perversions that would put us totally in the beast narrative instead of our sexual unions being of love and light, connecting at the heart level. So it's important that we know these things so that we can rise above them, so that these energetic beings can no longer feed upon us. So having said that, I want to take a look at something here in the Peshitta, in the New Testament, so that you can begin to see what's going on here. And of course, some of these things, and I, and I don't mean to pick on the Catholic Church, but yet I do, because they've wanted to keep us in the dark so that they can control and manipulate us. And how much easier is it for us to be controlled and manipulated by a beast system religion if we have attachments to us that keep us in our beast ego nature of fear so that they can continue to control and manipulate us. But in their system, if we have too much of an outside spirit force that isn't good, demonic possession, then they are called in to be the heroes to do an exorcism, but really they don't solve the problem. And that entity can be oppressed once again if they do not compress light within them and get themselves so they rise above their beast ego nature operating in fear because demonic entities will come right back because we are host bodies. Now think of the phrase Yahweh or Yahweh or uh, the Lord of hosts, however you want to look at it. Lord of hosts, host bodies that need to be inhabited by a spirit, vessels. That's what we are. So we're either going to fill it with light and love or we leave ourselves open to attack from lesser regressive entities that want to utilize us to continue to polarize themselves into a service to self-nature. So let's look at this here. Be subject therefore unto Aloha, withstand Satana and he will flee from you. Or as in King James, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. The very first word is really telling us much of what we need to know for the rest of the sentence. And I think this is going to be very eye-opening for you to be able to see what's going on here. So the very first word in the root is serve, to subject, to... And when we take a look at this, we're going to go into uh, the Aramaic portion of it. Do make, subdue, subject, act, form, or perform, and celebrate... Again, in the system of duality, if we are not understanding that we live in the system of duality, this will not make sense to you. This is the language. These are the languages of duality, this or that, so we can learn and grow from in the school of divinity, including understanding the differences between angels and demons as messengers. I've connected this before as well to angel morphology and that angels are messengers that are also considered priests. Uh, they are considered teachers and prophets. And so really, in the act of becoming a messenger, when we prophesy over you, is we are speaking the word over you prophetically in your process of becoming. Sometimes we can get words straight from source that lets us know where someone is at, but it is also being able to take the word and speak it over somebody. So I'm speaking this over you today so that you can comprehend what this whole subject matter is and what we do and what we have the power and authority over so this is not an issue in our lives anymore. To do makes subdue, subject, act, perform, and celebrate. So our work and our labor, therefore, so what we are subject to, our labor, our work, is to go through the fire. This is ish. This is the word for fire. 
the fiery covenant. We have spoken about that many, many times. The fiery covenant, which is all about love. It is our work, Ibed, if I can highlight it here, our work that we subject ourselves to, understanding that this fire is meant to consume the lower beast ego nature so that we can, be part, can become one with the spirit, one with source, half the anointing that is utilized through the instruction process to go through the consuming fire of purification, sheen, has a fallen noon on it, to consume our lower flesh noon nature, beast nature, through the covenant of love. And because this is on the prefix, this is dealing with mother. So mother is bringing the fire to you through the covenant of love so that you can have the eyes to see the fountain of the living water that is within you, the purpose of building yourself, bet ta through the process of the 222, two paths through the 22 letters that build your temple, in order to uh, go through the door of your inner man so that you will have the revelation that is necessary found within so that you can connect to Father. So that's what the very first word is telling us, that we are to do and to work. Otherwise, we are going to be a slave. And the whole process of this, again, service or uh, in the system of duality, you're either going to be a slave to something or you're going to be a sovereign. So our work and the deed of what we are doing is so that we are no longer a slave to that beast nature, why it needs to be burnt up through the covenant of love, so that we can be a sovereign over us and connect us back to source, to father. This next word is really important because we need to comprehend that the Hebrew and the Aramaic are overlaid on one another. They are meant to be one. So we start with the Hebrew, which is the divine masculine way of teaching, very linear in style. Then we add the divine feminine spiral in, spiral in nature on top of it, unifying them into one, which then activates our zero point within us. Uh, crystal consciousness, crystalline body, however you want to look at that but it creates the toroidal field within us so that we can become the vessels of light out of our beast ego, lesser flesh nature. But this word, when you see it right here in Hebrew, Chahil, this is the word for temple. This is literally the word for temple. So this is talking about the work and the service that we do in our labor so that we can purify us through the fire of our temple. We are the third temple. And when we go in and we take a look at this, they have said, therefore and hence. But knowing that this is temple, it also has the word chil in it, which comes from the root chol, which means to be whole and to be completed. So as a temple, revelation is going to come to us so that we can cough, tame ourselves, yoke ourselves, grasp a hold of the power of the language, kaf pei, pei is the mouth that speaks forth this revelation to us, so that we can be given the seed vision, the power means and direction within our innermost being, so that we can be instructed through the letters of light, so that we can become whole and complete as a temple, a temple that is of fire, a fire temple. Think of plasma light energy here. Therefore, unto aloha. And aloha is the word for God in the New Testament. It is not yod heh vav -Heh, It is not Yahuwah. It is not Elohim. This is, and notice that the root of this is aleph lamed hey aleph. But it's added a lamed in front of it, which is instruction, a teaching shepherd of light that has the staff of authority that will goad and urge, that is an L, the strong leader, teaching shepherd that brings forth the revelation of oneness. And this is right here. This is actually the letters, the constituent letters, one form of the hay. It's made up of a hay and a hay, two hays together, or a hay olive. So the twin revelations are meant for you to have the revelation of oneness again, the unified field of oneness. So that is God. So again, your temple, your temple, the work that you do 
to connect to Father, your temple, of and as God, of light, Lamed. This is huge. Then we have the word kum. They said that it is stand, but it is kum. And we're going to go into a little bit deeper on this one. Because it means rise, stand, establish, and stand. Now, if you see our channel, <laughs> that is part of our uh, the meaning of our channel name is the stand. It is based on this word here, kum, and which is the front part portion of the Qumran community, kum, to stand and to rise. And this is absolutely beautiful when you take a look at this because standing and rising, in the Aramaic, the root was kuf mem. But what do we see added? We have a vav on the prefix, a ba vav in the root, and a vav on the su suffix. And if you know anything about the letters, vav is the number six. So right here, we have six, six, and six. So this is the stand and the rising of the number of man, 666. Six times three is 18, one plus eight is nine in troidal math. That means a vessel that has become completed in their stand. And that makes perfect sense because of the word right before, Leoloa. Kum, 666. Again, we need to flip these narratives of things that they have told us to fear to understand that there is a deeper meaning here and they wanted you to shy away from all of that. So anything that you've been told to fear, anything that you've said is of evil and is the doctrines of demons that the Catholic Church has put forth and the rest of the Christian churches have follow suit, that is probably something you should look at because there is value there and they don't want you to see it because it'll set you free from their control. So now we have the stand. Then we're going to look at the next word that also has a lament added to the front of it. We dig a little deeper here. Against, near, toward, resist, and opposite to. Kuf, bet, lamed. This is huge because this is, you've heard of the cabal. <laughs> the cabal is opposite to vessels of light and love that are making their, sen, stan, or their stand. The cabal is... So we, as light vessels, we are connected to that which is against us, meaning the reverse of this is that we are compressing light. So in other words, in order to not have the cabal be against us, because really the negative energies here are meant for us to rise in our stand in sovereignty, we must get this under our we need, must get this under our feet and rise above and stand upon it. We are being subjected to the cabal because we are meant to rise and stand in our sovereignty. They are only as a catalyst for us to rise up, but they are wanting us to rise up in a place where we are operating in the lower density frequencies through anger, through fear. They want to manipulate us. We are meant to rise above that becoming a temple of light as unto Aloha so that we can make our stand in an unconventional way than the way they want us to. So, as teaching shepherds of light that are connected to Mother, we compress light within us to build ourselves on the inside that will instruct us. And it's interesting here because this is also another word for heart, Bal. It also means husband, but it also means a heart that is anxious and fearful, that is has terror. So the resolve in this word, the cabal that co controls us, is that we need to go through the language, the letters of light that are connecting us through the humble process so we can compress light within to deal with what we need to on our inside that will instruct us so that we no longer have the adversary that is against us. This is huge for you to comprehend that the adversary, Satan, is closer than we think. We have shared this with you before, but if this is the first video you're listening, this is, what is what's in us. The adversarial component that is within us is our beast ego nature. So 
In order for us to deal with this, we need to go through the process of being wed. To be married, this is the signet ring and the wedding ring as symbolism, but this letter means to hedge in, protect, support, and prop you up, surrounding you with a shield of thorns that protect you while you are wrestling through the spiritual path in the world so that you can become one. The whole reason why we have an adversarial component is that we would be ought, choose the spiritual path to seek oneness, which is the whole beginning of the work that we are to labor to, to become one, to become one with the fire and the covenant in our temple, to become one as a teaching and shepherd of God, as God, our school of divinity, so we can stand. Then we have the last two words. Flee and from. Let's dig into flee. See what Jastro says with flee. And then we will go ahead and layer it out so that you can understand a little bit more what's going on. Arach. To pass and squeeze through. To flee and run. To put to flight and chase. Okay, that is really... That is a huge thing. <laughs> because... It's to flee and run, but to also put in flight and chase while you are being squeezed. And it's to pass, to pass through, to pass a test, to cross over. So when we take a look at this, the root of it is Ein Resh Kuf. So let's go back. Ein Resh Kuf. So we have two choices here. We are either going to flee or put to flight. And what are we putting to flight? Because I choose to take it to another side. This is your choice in the system of duality. I am going to put to flight what needs to be put to flight so that I can stand. And one other point I wanted to tell you, it is important for you to realize that the morphing of, the morphing of this word from the Hebrew to the Aramaic in Hebrew, that is a sheen, and it is left with a noon that has fallen. So between the New Testament and the Old Testament, the change is huge. So we went from a sheen to a semek, the consuming fire, to the place of being wed and wedged in and supported and protected from the fallen noon to the risen noon. And really what this is saying is that when we also become one into the unified field, we become an adversary to this lower beast matrix because we found the unified field as oneness. And that is what puts to flight that which is once was an adversary to us. By connecting to mother in humility, we are going to have our eyes open to see the purpose of what's going on to raise us up from being poor and destitute to first fruit leaders because we've chosen to compress light within us in the circle of time through that which was once hidden now revealed finding the narrow path between the two this is also part of the word that means to rise or to rouse ourselves awake if you're sleeping and slumbering in the matrix you will never see this but those who have roused themselves awake will be given the eyes to see what they need to to raise themselves up to be a first fruit then we have the word from, and in its original form, it would be mem nun. This is also the word that means manna. In Hebrew, mem nun is manna. So through your manna, the living water teachings in the spiritual path, this will rise you, raise you up, kun, to be strong and firm. This suffix is huge. I had something the other night, and I, I'm probably going to share it a little bit later, or I may not. It could have been for me. But I wanted to share with you this, kun, properly to be erect, to stand perpendicular, to be set up, to fix, prepare, apply, appoint, render sure, proper, and prosperous. This suffix is all over the place in the New Testament. 
so to be firm, to be standing erect. So it's not that we are resisting. We are doing what is necessary to put that which has subjugated us, Cabal, to put it to flight so that we are no longer in that place of being controlled and manipulated by demonic entities. And that is all about us building our temple, realizing and remembering through the mnemonic devices of the letters of light and love that we are of and from as God, as elves, as sovereign beings who are teaching shepherds of light. And then we will be free from any and all demonic oppression of lower frequencies that are trying to subject us, to control and manipulate us so they can continue to polarize in their service to self to be able to get out of this lower dimension and be able to utilize their power in an area where they can continue to control and manipulate in the etheric field. This is how we demon proof ourselves. So I hope this answers the question. I know this was long, but this is important for us to know these things. So thank you for the question and I hope that I brought a good result to you. Please let's have a discussion about this. Um, like, subscribe, share, click the bell for notifications so that you don't miss any of our new information because we're gonna continue to provide a lot for you while we are navigating these lesser waters of chaos so that we can be placed into the waters above, out of the chaos, out of the beast ego, out of the beast matrix and the beast systems and everything that is part of that. So shalom, shalom and namaste.